Hey guys, so we decided we would do a video for you guys on MCAT study tips. <laughs> so um, here it goes, we have top 10 study tips that we think kind of helped us or things we, if we could go back that we would do better, our top 10 pieces of advice. Yeah. So number one is find a study method that works for you and then stick to it. So I think one of the biggest problems I had was be getting overwhelmed with the amount of resources that there is for the MCAT and you know you might hear from a friend that they were using this book that was really helpful and that's all good but once you find something that works for you I would kind of stick with it and don't get too distracted or overwhelmed by all the other options that you could be using you know obviously if you have more time and you want to explore that later that's I think a good idea but I wouldn't in the beginning get too crazy using all different types of sources and all that um, so one of the decisions you'll have to make is whether you want to do an MCAT class or study by yourself. Um, what do you recommend? So it depends on you know, how you are. If you are the type of person who needs structure and who's not very disciplined, um, definitely go with a class, even though, I guess, you know, pros and cons either way. But a class is obviously going to cost money, and it's going to be a lot of money. It's going to be, it could be up to 1000 it could be $2,000, it could be... Some classes are $10,000, like summer retreats. <laughs> but if you need to go away for a summer retreat to study for the MCAT, yeah, it's, it's your own It's your own. Deal. <laughs> That's intense. <laughs> That's not necessary, I don't think. But No, but um, just decide what you want to do. If you want to self-study and you think you can handle the rigorous, you know, if you think you can be disciplined with it and, you know, go in day in, day out in the library and, you know, follow your own schedule, um, then you know that's up to you but those are pretty much two options. Book wise what I would recommend for content I'll, I tend to like exam crackers and also the Khan Academy videos that are specifically designed for the MCAT I think those are really good and what would you say was good for practice questions? So I would say practice questions your golden questions are going to be your AMC questions mm -hmm. so you got you know your uh, what is it? The the first test they came out with that was percentile ranked. They didn't actually give you a score. Mm -hmm. and you have the question packs, and then you have flashcards. Flashcards. They just came out that over the summer. Um, then the score test one, and then they just mm -hmm. came out with score test number two. So you have pretty much like uh, up to like two thousand questions just from all those resources. All right. So let's move on to tip number two. You want to say that? Yeah, I do want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so start early and make a schedule. Um, if you are have no job, if you have no obligations, if you're doing studying for the MCAT over the summer, I would say um, take a summer, take three months, and you can pretty much, if you do eight hours a day, that's pretty extreme, but if you do eight hours a day and take Sundays off, um, you can pretty much be ready for it, I feel like, in that amount of time. But If, if you that's have a like job, all you do, yeah, I would say like three to four months if your only priority is going to be studying for the MCAT. But if you have other... If you have a job, if you have, you know, taking classes, I would say give yourself six months and break it down into four hours a day or as much as you can do. Even eight. I would do, like, if you're in school, like, with a full pack semester, I know everyone's different, but for me, like, I would still start as early as you can, and I would go six to eight months if you could. Yeah, it also depends on how well you know the content also, um, depending on how much you absorb from your classes such as physics, chemistry, or biology. Mm -hmm. um, so it all varies, and maybe you're the type of person who can do it in two weeks. Yeah, you know? I mean, I don't recommend that, but I think if you could do it in two weeks, imagine how much better you would do if you actually gave yourself the time. But yeah. Also, like, if we're talking about the most ideal time to take the MCAT, I would say it's probably the summer between your the end of your sophomore year and the beginning of your junior year, if you don't want to take a year off. If you are planning on taking a year off, then you could... Um, take the exam, I guess, between junior and senior year that summer. Yeah. But like, I think that's probably your best thing to do because you're not, just, yeah, you're not distracted. You can carve out time to study, and I think that if I, I personally didn't take it, do that way. I studied during the school year, and yeah. it would have been so much easier. More sunlight per day in the summer. <laughs> you know, you got the ice cream man coming by, so you don't gotta leave your house if you want food. <laughs> so, it, in terms of making a schedule. You know, I wouldn't go too crazy. I'm one of those people that likes to like plan every second, but then I get overwhelmed and then I don't stick to my schedule and then I get mad at myself for not sticking to my schedule. So I think the thing that worked best for me was to create big landmarks. Like I'm gonna finish chemistry by this date, biology by this date, and then 
I'm going to do these major practice exams on these dates. And then week by week is when I would kind of set a weekly schedule for what I was going to accomplish. And I think the best thing to do so that you don't get distracted is, and also so you don't get overwhelmed, is to carve out like a certain amount of time per day that you will be um, studying. Um, tip number three is don't spend too much time on content. I think I started to make this mistake in the beginning and I know that when I speak with other people, a lot of people do this. I would say max like one to two months should be content and then the rest of your studying should be practice questions. And then let's say you realize through your practice questions you're bad at a certain topic, then do that content. You know, don't strictly do content for so long and only do like a month of practice questions. I think that's a bad idea. Because if you understand the style of the questions that they're asking you, you can, even if you know nothing about the content, mm -hmm. you can pretty much get two or three questions on every single passage without pretty much being an expert with the content um, from that passage. Tip 40, number four. Okay, tip number four. <laughs> I like this. Practice. <laughs> Yes, tip number four. <laughs> Once you hit the 40 day mark, you should after that point, 40 days until your exam after that point, you should be only pretty much doing practice questions um, and then brushing up on any content you find yourself weak in. Um, but practice questions, practice questions, practice questions. We're spread it out appropriately so you don't do it all the way at the end or don't do it all the way at the beginning. So make sure you spread that out. Right. Nice and, even. and also, just on that note, I would save your like. AMC practice exams till the end because they're probably the closest thing that you'll get to the actual test and I think if you do them in the beginning when you're not really that prepared you're kind of wasting a really good practice exam so I would save that towards the end. Tip number five which I think is really good is to review in your downtime. One thing that we like to do which I found really helpful was to, to buy like those little tiny notebooks and let's say you're doing a practice question and there's a tiny fact you didn't know, I would write that fact in my notebook and I would just kind of fill the pages with the facts and then let's say in between class or if I'm waiting online or yeah, something. Yeah, anytime you have downtime or maybe, maybe you'd be on your phone or something, I would flip open that notebook, it can fit in your pocket. and you class. Yeah, and you could just like memorize one fact at a time and then it's not so overwhelming but it's a good way to use your time wisely. Yeah, so it pretty much doesn't, you could just do random facts like um, E equals MC squared or F equals MA or mm -hmm. whatever formula Formulas. you don't know. Um, that's great to just throw in there and then you could review it um, whenever you have free time. Tip number six is to read. I'm not the best reader, <laughs> but you know, I got through the MCAT. Um, so read, um, even if you're not studying for the MCAT currently and you plan on a year or two years, mm -hmm. start reading books now, start reading the New York Times or whatever your um, local newspaper is um, as much as you can. Um, I would dedicate maybe an hour or two if you're currently not studying for the MCAT but plan on taking it um, just to reading books or whatever you can get your hands on those pamphlets or You want to practice read. being able to like actively read because in verbal and even just the science passages you want to be able to create some sort of main idea in your head as you're reading. You don't want to have to reread a paragraph three times because you weren't paying attention, which is something I would always do. So like I think that takes practice. So if you can kind of consciously read something and then try to summarize it at the end, I think that's a really good way to practice for verbal and the science sections. Tip number seven, we kind of already went over. It's just use all the AMC uh, resources available. You know, you just go on their website, see what they have. It's the closest thing you're gonna get to what you're being tested on, so use it wisely. So next up is number seven, do practice test time. This, this is, is number eight. Oh, okay, number eight. <laughs> Your stickler for the facts over here. Number eight. <laughs> Do your uh, practice test timed um, and sim uh, basically simulate the testing conditions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, take an eight hour chunk of your day um, and maybe pretend it's a real test. You know, eat what you would eat before, wake up at the time you would wake up, mm -hmm. um, bring the snacks you would bring, um, and so on take and so breaks. forth. Definitely and, take the breaks. Don't and, practice plowing through. I would, you know, no, definitely practice take the, you know, the half hour break, whatever it is, and then the what is it, 10 minutes or 15? Uh, I want to say 10. I think it's take one 10 minute break, 30 minutes, and then another 10 minute yeah. break. Yeah. So take your, t basically simulate the test, go to the library, or find a place that's quiet, um, and just work through the test in that eight hour time. Mm -hmm. And tip number nine, I think is actually pretty important. It's kind of obvious, I guess, but stay healthy and take care of yourself. You know, this isn't 
the time to be pulling all-nighters and not sleeping and not eating right. You know, I, you're kind of like, it takes stamina to do an exam for that long. So I would, you know, do whatever you can to help your brain and just be comfortable. I think you'll think more clearly if you can get some exercise in and if you're not eating, I guess, Nutella and potato chips, which is really easy to do when you want a treat after studying for so long. But I think that's a pretty important piece of advice. And our last tip. The last tip is to be confident. You gotta walk in there like you, you just won the Super Bowl or something. <laughs> what? I like that analogy. Yeah, you gotta be confident. You gotta go in there and once you sit down and you're working through the questions, your first passage, you're gonna be, you know, trying to hustle through it. You don't know what, what's going on, what this is, mm -hmm. but, you know, after a couple passages and you're probably gonna say to yourself, wow, this is, if you prepared well enough, wow, this is pretty easy and you should feel confident um, going through it, but you know, there's always going to be questions that, you know, mm -hmm. stump you up, but you just have to know that you know the material. And yeah. And you just need to, you know, do your best and just know that you know it. If, you do. Yeah, if you put the time in and you know you studied and you covered all the topics you should have covered, if you don't know an answer, it's most likely because you're not supposed to and there's a hint somewhere in the passage or maybe it's a, it's a one of those, what, practice questions, what do they do? The ones they throw away, aren't there some questions that are like yeah, tested? Experimental yeah, questions. experimental questions. Um, so, like, don't freak out if there's like an extremely hard passage. Chances are it's hard for everyone, and you can't let that mess with you. You have to just like be confident in the, that you studied enough and just relax. Don't yeah. stress out. Do you have any bonus tips? Bonus tips? I don't know. I, I got a bonus so. tip. So, when you, when, you, when you got the 10 minute break, um, it's not really 10 minutes because you know what? There's going to be people behind you, oh, yeah. uh, people in front of you that are trying to check in or check out, and that takes forever sometimes. They like pat so, you down, you got to empty your pockets, yeah. do a fingerprint, it's you pretty know, intense. Who knows what, what this kid in front of you is trying to do, <laughs> you know, you know. so when you when you, you got to take a bathroom break, practice being quick. Mm -hmm. And your test would just kind of, sometimes it just starts after the 10 minute mark, even if you're not back, so you don't want to lose time. Yeah. But I think we should do, we might do another video of like, how to be successful on test day or what to do leading up to test day, if that's something you guys would be yeah. interested in. So. so stuff your face with, you know, whatever almonds you got going on or <laughs> whatever you brought and chew while you're online. That's what I did. Yeah, I'm no pro. <laughs> I'm just a survivor. <laughs> All right, so on that note, I think that covers our top 10 tips. Um, again, if you guys have any suggestions for videos you want us to do in the future, just comment we'll below. Do, we have no yeah, right yeah, right. I, th probably no one will watch this, but... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you guys next time. See ya.